Take a look at this. An automatic crop farm that automatically harvests your crops as you play. But wait, there's more. An automatic crop farm that is powered by bees that fertilize the plants, allowing them to grow quicker. But wait, there is more. The beehives that the bees live within get harvested automatically. That's right, two automatic farms within one confined space. I've tested this system time and time again to make it as efficient and easy to build as possible. I would call this a moderately easy thing to build. And at this timestamp, I will show you exactly how to build it and all of the supplies you are going to need. But this is also going to kind of couple as a behind the scenes of the potato only Minecraft series that we're also hosting on this channel. If you're not interested in that whatsoever, <laughs> then skip to that timestamp right there. So as you probably notice, some big changes have happened recently. Look at the difference in this castle here. This is how it used to look like, and now reskinned, retexturized, redesigned, this is how it looks like now. Wow. <laughs> I spent a lot of time making this. And what is our boy Hyde doing? Let's shoot him out of the sky here. Uh, oh, he's really shooting something else. He's not going to expect this. Oh, look at that lag. <laughs> we got him, boys. We got him, boys. <laughs> And basically our aspiration with this whole area here is to create a nice rustic little village here. Uh, we're going to probably knock out this entire mountain right here. And this here is a bridge that we both built uh, the other day. And I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's got those chiseled stones coming through, a double layer, you know, kind of um, arch coming underneath here. You can drive your boat within it so long as you don't hit a lily pad <laughs> and then uh, it's got this beautiful little archway we're kind of going for kind of like a hermit craft type style with a lot of these builds as you can see you know the arch roofs you know kind of like a wholesome a wholesome type of uh, cozy type builds I'm really really looking forward to how we're to what we're gonna do with this uh, particular series and I'm really digging this uh, texturized pathway that we've made here I think it really really uh, ties in with the whole aesthetic of this village that we want to uh, achieve here uh, I think the vines look absolutely excellent and oh my god Take a look at that. I only just recently learned how to start texturizing walls properly, and I think it looks excellent. And look at this coming up all the way to the top. What you do is you take the elevator all the way to the top. You get this nice aesthetic, you know, upper upper part here. This is you. This is where we used to snipe people, uh, snipe mobs from. But now instead, we get to snipe from all the way up here. Wow, look at that, guys. And that bridge is just looking fantastic, in my opinion, of course. Now I'm going to show you probably the biggest project we have ever achieved in this uh, Raw Potato Only Man series. Okay. Da -da -da -da. Hell yeah. Look at this, guys. So this is an auto sorter. This completely 100% automates the process of sorting items. Let's say, hypothetically, we wanted to store... 64 white concrete, uh, some gray concrete. Yeah, let's uh, mix it around a little bit here just to give you an idea of uh, how interestingly this works. Look at all the places that uh, that stuff could go. There's absolutely no way it could put it all in the right spot, right? Well, here we go. There's the white concrete loading in here. This is all respectively you know what it's supposed to be within every chest and it should be onto the gray concrete now yep there she blows so I figured out how to do this through a tutorial and then I uh, expanded it to encapsulate three levels that took a really really long time it took me hours and hours to figure out how to do this properly but it is finally in motion and we're really kind of thinking about what we're gonna actually do with that whole uh, upper castle area there. 
Uh, it's hard to say whether we want to make the whole thing a giant item sorter or whether we want to make, uh, you know, only part of it an item sorter and then the rest of it a nice posh castle. But uh, needless to say, I think it's going to be really cool either way. I'm kind of almost gravitating towards open concept and put every single item in Minecraft and allow that, uh, allow that uh, system to sort it out. Uh, but that's going to take up a lot of space and I, we probably have to leave the whole thing open concept. And of course, um, here is where the magic begins in this tutorial. These are all just standard potato farms, right? These two here. But then this one, of course, is the bee farm, which I will now show you how to make right now. So the things you're going to need for this build are the following objects. You're going to need eight hoppers. You're going to need about 64 dirt. And by the way, uh, everything I have down here in the hot bar are optional things. This is all mandatory stuff, right? So uh, a stack and a half or so of dirt. We're going to need about a stack and a half of any type of flower, uh, preferably a large variety of flowers. Uh, I find that works the best when you get a whole large variety. Okay, uh, two stacks and a half of glass. Uh, half of those can be panes if you'd like. And then we're going to grab one composter. We're going to grab two chests, two beehives, two dispensers, two shears, four redstone dust. We're going to need two villagers, obviously not the eggs, but you have to be able to get two villagers into this farm at some point. You're going to be able to, you're going to have to get about six bees into this farm or at least that's the capacity and that's the, that's the amount that's going to create the most honeycomb for you and it's going to pollinate the uh, plants in the most optimal fashion uh, so for the upper section of the farm you're going to need three stacks of 64 of any type of building block uh, along with a half stack right so that's for the top section of the farm and then in the lower section of the farm you're going to need about two stacks of any form of building block doesn't really matter what you use. And then we are going to need a workstation of any kind. Doesn't matter what you use. In this case, the receiver of the potatoes and carrots is going to be a librarian. And then we're going to need three trapdoors of any variety and four you know, gates of any variety as well. I already covered that. That's going to be for the bottom of the farm. And as I said earlier, these are all suggestions here. Uh, I mean, this is technically necessary per se because you have the plants, uh, you know, the actual, you know, uh, crops. They just had, didn't have a lot of space up here. But these two here are absolutely 100% suggestions. This is for lighting reasons. You can absolutely just use torches. But as you can see, I have uh, redstone lamps coming all the way on the sides there. I don't like the way torches look personally. So I have those redstone lamps up there. And then I also have glowstone lining the bottom of the farm and that peeks through when you, you know, uh, use a hoe on these dirt blocks. So let us get right down to the build. Hello there. Here I am in my creative test world because I didn't have enough resources in my survival world. So this is essentially what the grid is going to look like. This is the size of the farm. It is an 11 by 11 square. Uh, essentially and I've done it in a barbershop style here so you can kind of uh, see every single individual block but of course what you're gonna want to do is build it out one off the grounds so then the villagers are actually contained along with the bees and everything else inside of the farm and just for the sake of comprehension here's where the entrance is gonna be all right so now what I'd like to do is uh, build one up here just for the entrance. See, this is kind of what this would look like for the most part. I'm going to design it later, but uh, what you've got is glass panes coming all the way around. Now, in an ideal scenario, of course, you would use glass blocks. But in this case, I find that um, the way that the AI of the villagers works for this 11 by 11 square is they don't go, they don't come up here. They simply don't, because what I am going to do is I'm going to build it out too like this, um, because that's what I find aesthetically pleasing. And you would assume that they would jump up and break the crops. They don't, at least as of 1.15.2 anyway. They do not jump up and break your stuff. But if you are concerned about that, then definitely just build this out with glass blocks. 
Now we've built up two glass panes above this bordering block here. We have a nice entrance going on. Now let's find the center of our farm. In this case, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's gonna be right here. Now what we're gonna to wanna to do is uh, put a block down just like that. So we can put the composter right on top. You uh, break a block right beside the composter. You throw some water in there and then you plug it right back up. And then you start hoeing away. Everywhere where you can uh, start hoeing away, you do exactly as such. And this is exactly how far the water is going to span in terms of it's uh, properly being able to moisturize these this uh, tillable and uh, crop sustaining land. So now that's all tilled up, something I like to do personally because I don't like torches at all. I hate torches actually. What I like to do is dig out all the way around, dig out the whole thing around and what you could do is you could put glowstone all the way around the entire build and what will happen because uh, these edges are tilled this light will actually leak out all the way around which is really really nice because then all you really have to do is put like one torch in the center and then no zombies will spawn in here so now to make this a little more of an enclosed structure and also to make room for our dirt blocks which you're gonna which we're going to put uh, you know flowers on top of so the beads and so the bees can pollinate the flowers and therefore um, you know fertilize the crops we're going to build this out all the way around right on top of the glass panes and look how nice and industrial that's looking i really like the look of that and then this is very very important here what we're going to want to do is uh take some dirt or some coarse dirt i like to use coarse dirt because no grass is going to grow on top of it you know just right beside that top block on top of the panes just put it all the way around just like that and that's where you're going to put your flowers so we have that coming all the way around let's make another layer because we're going to have two beehives up in this farm i find two beehives really really works well for this particular farm i've tried three i've tried one i've tried four you could fit four um, but I find it just gets too congested and the villager uh, starts to get really confused because there's like so many bees going around um, and I find with two beehives the rates uh, for both the the crops and the uh, the honeycombs is optimized so now you grab some uh, flowers of your choice I find personally that's if you use a large variety of flowers, not only does it make it look better, but it seems to be more appealing for the bees. Something else to keep in mind, if you uh, plant your crops in rows of different types of crops, so let's say uh, hypothetically you planted a row of potatoes, then a row of carrots, then a row of potatoes, rows, row of carrots, then Minecraft for, some, for one reason or another tends to favor that over just one crop. In my potato-only Minecraft worlds, um, I only have potatoes because that's the only food that we can eat during that series uh, <laughs> while we're on hard mode by the way um, but uh, here I'm going to do different rows because it does tend to grow faster uh, for whatever reason Minecraft is coded that way okay so we have planted flowers all the way around oh I think I missed a spot here now for aesthetic purposes from the outside here it looks pretty bad so what I tend to do is Grab a, you know, maybe a different block, maybe the same block, however you want to style this. I have some great concrete here. I'm going to work it all the way around the outside to make it look nicer. And also so it can build out just a little bit further because we're going to have kind of a dome on top for the um, bees to have a little more room to pollinate uh, a variety of flowers. All right, so this is how it looks like on the outside now. Looking a lot better. Um, something that I find helps with the pathfinding of the bees is putting trapdoors down here. Now, it's not necessary per se, uh, but first off, I do think it looks better. Uh, I know this is a lot of trapdoors to have to make, um, so it's not a necessary part of this whatsoever, but I do find that the bees don't get stuck down here nearly as easily if you do it like this. So now we have to kind of make a ceiling on top of this composter so the villager doesn't jump on top of it. The villager will gravitate towards this. So I find the best way to put a ceiling on it so he can get to it, but at the same time, you know, can't actually jump on top of it is the, uh, you know, trapdoor perpendicular to it 
you know, get rid of it, build down some slabs, just like that, until it's on top of it. Delete this, de delete all these, put the trapdoor in back, and what you have is a place where, you know, he can't get up, but you can still access this, and everything is fine there. Here, I broke that. So now we have to create a place for the villager who is going to be here, receiving the crops that the farmer villager is going to be collecting from this farm as it grows. Right, so we're going to want to knock out three blocks here along with the panes just so we can get a better idea of where to put this. So now what I tend to do is put some building blocks just like that. So that means you have two panes and then the corner there which is going to be one of those bent panes. So four just like that. And what I also tend to do is knock out just these three, you know, flower plots just like that. So now, what I tend to do is grab some walls, I'm going to use diorite walls, build them out just like that. You're going to grab uh, some hoppers, right, crouch, boom, just like that, one more just like that. Grab a trapdoor, stick it right there, grab some building blocks, and close that area just like that. And what you have, uh, once you stick a trapdoor right here in front of this hopper, is a place for this villager that's walking around here to go, oh, this is a buddy that I can give potatoes or carrots or whatever to, or beetroot, but I don't know why you would ever grow beetroot. So I find uh, the villager AI really, really likes this trapdoor system here. Like I've tried to do it where, you know, you have a, a block that it comes on top of, uh, or, you know, staircases. I've tried a bunch of different things. It seems like the trapdoor is something that it gravitates towards and it's really familiar with it and it works with the pathfinding AI. Now, uh, all you do, because he is going to come up here and he is going to jump right back down, what you are going to want to do is create a little bit of space here. Typically, I do this so that when he comes back down he doesn't break crops because coming into broken crops crop plots it's just annoying it will decrease the amount of crops that this farm can produce but at least you're not going to have broken crops and uh you know just like gross dirt patches and all of this so now we are in the back here built up one block right here this is where the other villager is going to stand and now the biggest pet peeve that a lot of people have with the bees is they're very small and they get into pretty much everything but if you build out your trap doors like this, you build that one right there so it goes flesh up against that hopper, the bee is not going to be able to come down here. Um, well, another thing is usually this top one here would be uh, Minecraft with hopper because it has a larger co collection radius, but the bees tend to push around the hopper, which is unfortunate, but the hopper will do just fine, especially if you have, if you have a trap door here, which is going to block a lot of the crops and it's going to go down into the collection system. And if you want to build a collection system right now, you can. Uh, all you do is come down here. Oh, look, bedrock. <laughs> um, finds where the hopper, the bottom of the hopper. Let's say you build out uh, one couple more hoppers just like that. And then you grab a chest and you put it right there, right? So then. Uh, if something goes into the top of this, bada bing, bada boom, it's in the chest. And another very necessary trapdoor you're going to need so the bees can't get in here is one that goes just like that. You know, you crouch and you put it right there, right? So the villager is going to be here. The bees are not going to be able to get in, but the villager is going to have a hard time getting in as it is right now. So put this down for now. So now what you basically do is build it out and around, make this a contained area that the villager's not going to be able to move around inside of. Just like this. And you could even, I don't know, delete the corners if you wanted to. This really matters so long as we have a nice contained area. Oh, I'm going to definitely put some blocks there. Uh, so now, we got to get a villager up inside this thing, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So in my opinion, the easiest way to get him up in there is with the railroad make sure that the railroad that he's being the, the uh cart that he's being plopped into is on a regular rail and not a powered rail so what you can do i'm going to grab a bunch of potatoes here hey buddy there's potatoes over there look at that food hey look look, look at that come on now you want so you want some of this don't you oh boy yeah and then maybe just push maybe yeah there we go nudge him a little bit 
And he's in. He is officially in, ladies and gentlemen. So you might have to uh, nudge him a little more, get him right flesh up against this. Bring that trapdoor up, just like that. And then if you've nudged him as much as you can nudge him, you'll likely be able to place a block right here, get him in a very, very contained area, delete the minecart, he's gonna take a little bit of damage, doesn't matter. You delete that, and then you delete your whole containment system here. And if you're anything like me, that I like to build out some glass like this, because, I don't know, watching suffering is fun for me, I guess. And then what you could do is knock out any of these three right here at his feet, and give him, some, give him workplace. It doesn't really matter what job you give him. Personally, I'm going to give him a lectern, so he, be he can become a librarian. And I find that when they have a profession, uh, this farmer villager, oh, geez, okay, uh, has, a, <laughs> has a much better idea what to do with his potatoes, and this guy knows that it's his job to receive potatoes, and so on and so forth. So now, to get a better idea of where we're going to build our beehives and the automatic system that's going to harvest our beehives, put a torch on top of this slab, and you should be able to put a torch on top of this slab, and if you can't, then you probably place this block in the wrong spot. So now, you want to grab a chest, and this is kind of kind of waver off to one side or the other, it doesn't really matter, right? And you're going to have a torch right underneath that chest, you know, burning its ass a little bit. You put it off to one side, now you have a double chest. Now you're going to want to come up here, you grab some hoppers, you crouch, one, two, and then if you're in survival, which you probably are, jump all the way up onto here, uh, crouch, jump, hopper, crouch, jump, hopper, just like that. And with this automatic system, we're going to be building it in that direction. The way the chest is facing right now is going to be the front. So what you're going to want to do is have the slits of the beehives that you're going to put on top of this hopper here facing this way, right? The slits are going to be out, oh, yeah, out this way, right? Just like that. And then you're going to want to grab some dispensers. You build out two blocks like this. These are temporary blocks. You build them out like this. You get rid of these, there's other ways to do this, but this is just how I've gotten around it. And as you can see, the whole of the dispenser is now facing the beehive. Let's do it on the other side here. Alright, bada bing, bada boom. And we got two holes facing the beehive. So now we need a redstone system that's going to sense when uh, this block has updated, and in this case, honey has been added to this block uh, from the bees pollinating this and bringing it back to the hive. And what better to do it than with a, an observer? What you're gonna do is crouch, jump, bada bing, just like that, okay? And then, all you do is you take a couple of permanent blocks. This is very simple, guys. You crouch there, you put those down, you grab some redstone, and you put four redstone blocks down just like that, in that fashion. But wait, we're missing something. When this block is updated, the observer fires, the redstone fires, this has nothing in it. Well, now it does. There we go, shears. The shear is going to shear the beehive, and then the hoppers are going to collect the honeycomb, and it's going to go right into this chest. And you can put as many shears as you want inside of the dispenser. Just for now, I'm going to put one shear in each dispenser, and they do get used up. So the more shears you have in there, the better. So now let's get this area closed in. It doesn't really matter how you get it closed in per se. I'm going to get it closed in so of course it has enough room for the redstone here. So uh, a block right above that. Um, personally I'm going to build out redstone lamps all the way around because I think it looks uh, pretty damn neat. Especially when they're lit up. And then I'm just going to kind of create kind of a dome around this. Again it does not really matter how you do this. Just don't leave too much space for the bees to go just like willy-nilly doing whatever the hell they want. You know, make it compact enough that it makes sense, but also don't, con don't like, build into this and, like, conf don't cut off the top of this whole system here. You know, create enough of a space that they're going to be able to roam around. So for the sake of uh, simplicity, all I've done is just one, two, three, four, and then roof up top just like that very very simple and i'm just going to do that all the way around apparently i've misaligned it but very very simple to do create a nice roof 
all the way around. You can make it four high, or you could even probably make it five high. But again, I would probably um, prefer to make it four high because it kind of confines the bees in a more space, in a smaller space, and it's probably going to make it a lot easier for them to find the flowers and to pathfind to the hive and uh, not wander around too far. And hey, how about this? Black stained glass, you know, like a viewing window here. Why not? Just giving you some ideas. Alright, so we are now closed in. As you can see, there's that much space above here. This is going to work just fine. Now, you grab a villager from somewhere else, you gotta get a villager up in there, right? And one of the better ways to do this... Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Alright, well, he's gonna go right... <laughs> he's gonna go right to his block that he feels like he was just drawn to that. Uh, <laughs> if you're not the luckiest man in the world, then, uh, you know, you would use a boat instead. But just in general, generally speaking, uh, an unassigned villager is going to be gravitated towards, you know, a job block just like that. So what just happened, uh, although uncommon uh, in a lot of cases, it does, it can happen. But just for now, I am going to put him in a boat because now we got to bring some bees in. And I don't want him messing, I don't want him escaping as we're bringing bees in. And at this point, it's going to be a really, really good idea to lock both of these villagers in. If you don't know already, once you trade with these villagers first, they're not going to be unassigned and reassigned again. Um, and they're going to know their job block for now on because we've trade, traded with them once, okay? So this librarian is locked in. And this farmer is now locked in. And if you want to be very, very sure that these guys are not going to despawn or do anything weird, then grab a couple of name tags, you know, take them to an anvil, and uh, here we go. Norm MacDonald's wit and uh, bookcase full of claw hammers. There we go. We are, we are ready to bring some bees in here. So there's a couple ways that we can go about doing this. Uh, so you find a beehive. What you can do is you can wait until it's nighttime. Uh, when they've all come into their beehive, and then you can hit it with a silk touch pickaxe or a silk, silk touch axe, and you will have the whole nest, and you can bring it in there, wait until they all leave, break the beehive, and then they'll be in this area. Or what you can also do is find some, and then just lead them the whole way with some flowers, because they are attracted to flowers. Come here, boys. See, look, they like flowers a lot, and if I'm not mistaken, Oh yeah, there we go. See, that makes it even easier, honestly. You get a lead, and you bring them right in. So there's three main ways you can do it. All of them very viable. Hey, hey, okay, let's, let's give them more of a space to enter into here. There we go, okay. So he is in. You know what, I'm going to tie him to that pole here for now, just so he can't leave, can't wander off too far. Let's grab some more. Oh, look at that sunset bee on a leash. Hey, hey, come, mm, come on. Here we go, okay. And now in terms of containments, uh, both bees and villagers cannot open fence gates. So that works, tends to work pretty well. You grab your building block, you encapsulate it. What you can even do is you can make an airlock, right? You uh, build out two more. Okay. Nope, 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 nope. Uh, two more fence gates. There we go. And then, you know, like stick a torch in there or something. Light it up a little bit. Maybe stick some torches out on the outside somewhere. That's looking pretty good. And we are almost finished, guys. What we want to do... Oh, oh wow. They, they're, they've been pollinating already. They're just... They're, they're just absolutely hankering. Okay, let's, uh, let's take them off the leash. And now what you could do if you want more bees, each beehive holds three bees. So we have two beehives here, we're going to want six of them. And rather than bringing more, what we can do is bada bing, bada boom. Just like with all other animals, you can mate them. And oh my god, <laughs> that's so cute. So you can keep doing that until you have six bees. And of course we can let uh, Norm Macdonald's wit go, we can take him out of the boat now. We'll. Uh, get things on the roll now. So I'm gonna do a line of potatoes 
and then a line of carrots just like that and again for some reason minecraft or mojang you know they programmed it so this grows faster than just one line of something and hey if you even wanted to you could feed this downstairs uh and you know feed it through uh, a composter and put a hopper underneath the composter and make this a bone meal farm if you wanted to if you don't want crops you could turn this into a bone meal farm we are all planted we are ready to go now all we do is we play the waiting game oh and that's looking like the first exchange of goods right there see all that stuff flying at him let's uh, check down below here see what we got oh it's loading right in guys <laughs> I was here watching uh, doing some bicep curls <laughs> as I was uh, watching that go down it's been about 20 minutes so just be aware guys it takes uh, it could take 20 minutes to an hour for this to actually hey, get out of here T take 20 minutes to an hour for this farm to really to start to kick in for the gears to really start going and for these villagers to understand what's going on and that also will happen you know sometimes they'll uh, fall in love because some of the potatoes and carrots will come to this guy but so long as there's no beds around then you'll be absolutely absolutely fine uh, how much do we have down here now? Okay, 63 and 40 there. Uh, hopefully they'll keep exchanging there. Are they, yeah, they keep falling in love and it keeps getting denied there. How many uh, honeycombs do we have now? I'm guessing about 40? 33. Okay, there we go. So yeah, uh, we're definitely getting along there. And there we go again, about five minutes after that. What do we have now? Okay, piling in once again. And during this, I actually did a little more research into this. And it seems that villagers prefer to be on blocks with the lowest block cost. So I actually kind of made a mistake of putting these six concrete blocks here. Because uh, concrete blocks have a cost uh, of three and grass has a cost of zero right so actually if you put regular glass uh, grass blocks around here like this uh it's, there's actually a higher chance that the villagers will want to navigate to this area so that's a revision that i'm making um post all of that but as you saw earlier the concrete was working just fine but this might optimize it just a little bit so yeah it seems like there was that initial period in the beginning where uh, it took a little longer for the, the farm to get kick-started, but now every five minutes or so, you know, things are getting fed and things are looking really, really great. And just the way the villager works, uh, he will decimate your rows um, that you first in initiated, but at least, you know, as you can see, like there's a smattering of potatoes next to a smattering of carrots. So long as you kind of have... Um, you know them together like that you know sometimes he'll plant all carrots sometimes he'll plant all potatoes depending on what he has within his capacity and what he has to plant you know he's gonna he's gonna decimate the rows but at least there's gonna be a nice little variety here again let's oh man oh we have 45 honeycombs now so this is really this is really getting there as well and there is no bees stuck in there if a bee gets stuck inside of this area then it completely ruins the entire farm I, i've had that before like the bee gets stuck right inside and this guy can no longer give uh, any crops to this guy and it's a really big pain in the ass but if you arrange your trap doors like this you will be perfectly fine and well uh thank you so much for watching this guys if you have any questions leave them down in the comment section let me know if this works for you let me know let us know any revisions as to how this farm could be better and hopefully you like this um you know like uh behind the scenes type styled video uh, and you know jump to timestamp type of style if you don't like it also let me know down in the comment section and have a wonderful day